1244, Kolm, in the Teutonic state of Prussia. The Teutonic Knights have just been defeated in a major battle against the pagan Prussians. Martin von Gallen is a young boy whose family had moved into Kolm as settlers in the Teutonic state. Now, the Teutonic Knights, defeated, are powerless to protect the Christian settlers. The pagan tribesmen descend upon Kolm, burning the farmlands and gathering up the people as slaves. Martin and his family are among those captured As Martin and his family are being marched off into the Prussian wilderness, Martin's older sister, who is pregnant, is unable to keep up the pace. The Prussian warriors drag the girl out of the line and kill her right there in front of young Martin. It's a moment that will come to define Martin's life. Five years later, a large German crusade arrives in Prussia and annihilates the Prussian tribe that had captured Martin's family. Young Martin, by now a teenager, is liberated. He returns to Christian territory with a new resolve. He's decided to dedicate his life to fighting pagans. As a slave, Martin gains skills that are valuable to the Teutonic Knights. He has insider knowledge about the customs and habits of the Prussian tribes, and he speaks several Prussian dialects. During the 1250s, Martin serves in several Crusader armies. By 1260, he is serving in Kolm, along the most dangerous frontier in the Teutonic state. He is a scout for the brothers, who garrison the fortress of Raiden. From the start, it's apparent that Martin is a warrior of unusual skill. He's remarkably strong and shows much endurance. He's also intensely dedicated, undeterred by danger, distance, or discomfort. Although young, he is a man with a dark mission, revenge. During this early period, Martin is out on patrol with a Teutonic brother, deep in the wilderness. They encounter a campsite, occupied by five Prussians. Spurring their horses, Martin and the brother make a break for it, while the Prussians pursue them. Attempting to escape, Martin and the brother dismount and send their horses off running, while they themselves try to sneak away through the underbrush. But the ruse fails. The Prussians capture Martin and his companion. While three of the pagans set off to catch the horses, the others stay to guard over the prisoners. After a while, the guards decide to just kill the prisoners and take their valuables. As they're about to behead Martin, Martin speaks up in Prussian. Don't kill me like this. My shirt is very valuable. Take it off first, so you don't get blood on it. The Prussians laughing thank him for the advice, then proceed to unbind him so they can strip him. As soon as his hands are free, Martin punches one Prussian in the throat, dropping him instantly. He grabs the man's sword and hacks both pagans to death. After freeing the Teutonic brother, Martin and his companion stalk the remaining three Prussians, leaping upon them as they're leading back the horses. All three Prussians are slain, Martin and the brother loot the campsite, then return to the fortress of Raiden. Over the years, Martin becomes famous in the Prussian Wars. He leads a band of rugged frontiersmen, Germans, Slavs, and converted Prussians, with names like Conrad the Devil and Kudar the Sadovian. They hunt through the wild borderlands, they ambush military parties and villages, bringing back much booty in loot and prisoners to the Teutonic brothers. Martin is soon widely feared among the Prussian tribes, and tales of his exploits are recounted gravely around many a Prussian campfire.
By 1286, Martin is around 50 years old and receives intelligence from Konigsberg. A young pagan nobleman is angry about one of his kinsmen who has robbed him of his inheritance. The young pagan informs the Teutonic Knights about his kinsman's plans for a wedding. The Knights dispatch Martin to make the attack. Martin takes 20 experienced raiders and sets out with the young pagan who leads them straight to the wedding party. There, they find some 70 pagan nobles in a state of festive drunkenness. Mercilessly, Martin and his men set upon them, slaying men left and right and rounding up the women and children to be taken back as captives. Finally, Martin comes upon the young bridegroom lying asleep with his bride in his arms. The chronicler recounts that he would have preferred to just leave them be on their wedding day, but not Martin. With a horrible cry, Martin awakens them, ties them up, and leads them off as captives with the others. Meanwhile, Martin's companions collect all the costly wedding presents to be hauled back as booty. Martin never retires. Rather, as an old man, he raids even deeper into pagan territory. At last, he dies as he lived, violently, around 1295, amid a raid on the distant Bug River. Martin's life offers insight into the grim clashes between pagan and Christian that raged across the Prussian wilderness in the 13th century. Traumatized by the early horrors inflicted upon his family, Martin himself became much the thing he initially hated. However, historian William Urban points out that Martin's legend earned a certain amount of respect among the pagans themselves, much as the Christians came to respect the valiant Prussian chieftain, Skumond. In these horrible and brutal battles, warriors often developed an appreciation for the valor of an enemy. And yet, these conflicts are a stark reminder of human cruelty which can shatter innocence and leave a legacy of bitter violence.